Is wait what? Okay. All right. It's on. It's wrong. Okay. You know there are advantages to having. You know I'd really like to have a camera where uh, there's a monitor. You know usually you know like a camcorder or something. The modern ones you can actually flip the screen around 180, so you can actually look at the lens and actually see what the camera's recording. I need one of those because I've just been doing it blindly all this time. To be fair, when the first cameras were made, they couldn't even see the results for like days. It wasn't until like the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the, what was it, the, not the Instamatic camera, but the, like the Polaroid cameras where you, it actually spit the photo out of the front. You know, the, was it the self-processing cameras? It wasn't until those you got like instant results. Did you know Polaroid's no longer around? Or is that Kodiak? Kodak. Is that Kodak or Polaroid who's no longer around? Tragedy, I assure you. I got care. Speaking of tragedy. Yeah. Okay. So it's been a couple of weeks. Um. And uh. It's it's it, it's not bad. One thing I noticed though, batteries drained really fast. Now either I removed the batteries and completely forgot, or they just kind of they just kind of died all by themselves. I don't know. It's like it happened. It's hot in here still. Let's turn up that fan. better. Why am I talking about cameras and... Yeah, anyways, Shark Engine. Didn't turn out too badly. I'm trying to decide where to store this thing. You see, this is the problem with creating accessories. Accessory mecha is, especially the modern Super Sentai ones, you end up with a bunch of leftovers. Stuff like this. Uh, even the uh, heat-in discs from Schinkinger, I almost said Schurkinger, from Schinkinger, well, no, actually, they took care of it. Because you had, like, Daigo Yo could stare, store a couple of extra ones, and, well, actually, that was kind of it. You had the uh, Reka Daizento. I, I still want one of those. You had the Reka Daizento, which could store, like, five or, yeah, five or six discs on it all at the same time. That was pretty cool. But this, like, that kind of works. Mm. But that's kind of the problem with the modern Super Sentai, you know, gotta, gotta collect them all mentality, is what do you do with your accessories? And then their ultimate combinations, the one for this, for example, don't even take into consideration the... Uh, the accessories that the, the the accessories and the collecting gimmick that they created in the first place. It's a vicious, stupid, dumbass, fucked up cycle. And it's been happening for far too long, in my opinion. With that said, yay. Um, yeah, scissors. Forgot about the scissors. Cause why not? And I think I'll bring my water with me just in case. This came, believe it or not, the, this actually came in the box a couple, well, about seven hours ago it showed up. My parents, yes, I still live with my parents, by the way, spoiler alert. Um, they wanted to see, oh, hey, but what'd you get, what'd you get? So, all right, I'll open up out of the box. So, it technically, this is still an unboxing, except without the big box. So, hmm. This is the only one I'm going to get, too. Um... Am I going to be disappointed with this or not? Well, if anything, the UFO mode's kind of cute. Not so sure about the other mode, but we'll see. Vicious sit. Something else I noticed, uh, I'm not going to say which company I got this from, because obviously it was Hobby Link Japan, but it was stored in the box. These were folded over. Which surprises me, because HLG is usually pretty good about this. Isn't it? I don't really care 
if the boxes are intact, but it's got an ugly little fold right there, which can you at least make it my choice whether the box gets folded up or not? Can you at least ship it intact? That'd be nice. It's petty, but some collectors go crazy about this. Did you know, if you haven't seen the series, that the UFO Maru was the basis of all the shuriken and mecha. Shuriken mecha, whatever they're called. This is the basis. The, because in, it, this actually comes from outer space, and old gr asshole grandpa shuriken Jin, shuriken uh found it, salvaged it, and uh, used it to create all their technology. So unlike the sh uh, Shinkinger, where it had been passed down from mother to daughter, father to son, daughter okay for generations this is all brand new I have no idea like you'd expected like the ex you would expect it like the carrier zord whatever that big uh, whatever that thing was called you would have expected that to be the originating mecha but no it's an accessory that's just so so casually thrown out there I don't get it bad plot Hard to say. Shark Engine's not bad. Because it's not the best Super Sentai mecha I've ever had, but considering it's the first one I've collected since, um, for quite a while, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the seal across the, the kind of the forehead brim of the hat thing. It says Nin Nin. Nin 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 three sound effects. That's weird because they pop six into that one. Whatever. By the way, this makes for a rather nice uh, uh, UFO flying sort of thing is just this. So did that, by the way. So there it is. Paul and Maru. The, the gimmick, the accessory gimmick for an Ninja is not bad. I, I thought it was a good gimmick. It just came out kind of clumsy. So Paolo and Maru, um, it looks neat. I like the idea of the two massive hatchets. That works for me. Another green elephant. It's done, what, two, three times already? So whatever. At least it's an actual green elephant as opposed to pretending to be, pretending to be green like uh, what this Power Rangers wannabe. That doesn't look green. That looks turquoise, but they called it green. I can't remember off the top of my head there's another green elephant. But anyways. But the arms can't move. They're permanently stuck like this. What? And the elephant the elephant mode was not bad. Not bad. But just the the little mini robot mode, so disappointing. And then the combined form, you know, those don't really look like axes. They're supposed to be. It's supposed to be dual axes. Which, by the way, I'm absolutely loving on my warrior on uh, Guild Wars 2. I think it's fun. I love the twin axes just because she she's swinging them so fast. She's a female uh, uh, female char, by the way. But she's swinging those axes around so fast, and they recharge really quickly, and it does a lot of burst damage. That uh, I actually paid ten dollars and uh, renamed her. 
Yeah, previously she was, uh, what do I call her, Fast Turner. I called her Darren Fast Turner, because that's the naming convention in Guild Wars 2 or whatever. But, you know, the more I played with it, I was like, she's like a demon with twin axes. That's awesome. So I'm going to call her Darren Axe Devil. That sounds better, because it's like Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> so yeah, Darren Axe Devil. I thought that was appropriate. And I was right. <sighs> UFO Maru! Yes, you know, it's kind of not as chubby in person. It's actually nice and big. This is, this is a good size. But it's not the, not the chubby little flying saucer I was expecting. Kind of like a double-decker sandwich. Double-decker couch? Whatever. I hate that the obvious little handle right there I don't like that, but I do like that it serves as landing gear. It's kind of convenient that way, so. Whoop, visible head. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's got all his stuff on the bottom here, so. Not a lot you can do about it. I'm hoping the arms pose better in the alternate mode compared to the Shinobi Maru. Excuse it, then. Annoyingly loud. Alright, Oh. So this actually holds everything together. You know, why didn't why doesn't the handle fold down? It could have done that easily enough. Weird. Alright. And I'm fairly confident I won't need the instructions for this one. I'm confused. And the head goes down. Actually, that's not the head. Why isn't the head... Why isn't the head stored inside the chest? The head is a completely separate thing. Why would they do that? Oh, God. How am I going to get this? Oh, okay. I was about to complain, how the hell am I supposed to get the head out of there, but it turns out the joint's not that tight. Oh, much better on the shoulder joints. Much better. Wow. There's actually a lot of ratchet to these arms. Um, double checking back on there. And his legs suddenly miraculously gain a lot of stability all of a sudden. I can't tell if the shuriken is supposed to stay attached. I don't think it is. Well, it might be. It can be, but I'm just concerned it'll be off. Uh, it'll be uh, back heavy. It'll be back heavy. So there's a uh, UFO Maru. There's a nice uh, space alien appearance to him. And a little bit of uh, kind of 1940s, 50s spacesuits look to him. Very Mercury 7 kind of thing. And then he's got a little bit of robot mixed in there as well. 1940s kind of lost in space Twilight Zone kind of robots big clunky affairs I like it I kind of wish that this I kind of wish that this had been a full DX sized robot a little more complicated but and yes it does very much remind me of the uh, the Astro Megazord the Galaxy Mega from uh, Power Rangers in Space Mega Ranger it it very much reminds me of that. And it's actually supposed to because Ufomaru, I mentioned in the previous video that each of the 
What are these things? Otomo... Otomo ninja? Otomo nins? Like friendly ninjas or whatever it is. Each of these vehicles, each of the Zords, sorry, each of the Zords represents a different aspect of Japanese culture. There's, uh, there's industry, there's construction, there's the, the ninja, the culture, you know, there's the mythology, and then there's the kawaii. So, you know, that each of those repre is represented here. Well, Ufo Maru is supposed to represent the science fiction side. Not necessarily anime, but just the science fiction side. So there's very much tokusatsu, anime, um, whatever Godzilla is going for these days. Um, he's spo Ufo Maru is supposed to encompass that side of Japanese culture. So it's it's very much playing up the you know the that that side of Japanese culture, which I can totally appreciate. That was also a major draw for m me getting this one, is because, well, it, it represents, I mean, I can appreciate these things over here, but I also really appreciate this. So, yes. Now let's uh, put this thing together, shall we? Okay. <coughs> and why the hell can't the sword turn inward? I want to turn that sword inward so badly, but I can't. It only turns outwards. And it would not have killed them to design the fist so that it turned inwards to begin this. There would, it, to begin with. There was nothing wrong with that. Just they chose to have it turn that way for whatever reason. And I really don't like it. That pissed me off. The other thing. Why is this panel on the, on the right arm? Well, I... Well, I know why it's there. It's supposed to be, you know, a grill, front bumper, blah, 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 whatever it is. But why does it move? Because I've looked at all the combinations that this thing goes through, including the transformation just into dump mode. And there's no reason whatsoever for this to move. There's none. I, 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 don't, I don't get it. Why, why is that there? And, you know, that thing doesn't even come off. At least I don't think it does. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, so not as sad. But, yeah, I, I don't understand. Why Why is this panel on here? Why does this panel move? I'm sorry. Why, why, why does it move? It doesn't need to move. They could have designed it. I mean, the wheels will move past. Yeah, I'm going to take this arm off anyway, so I might as well do it. Watch this panel, okay? There's one wheel. Turn the fist the wrong direction, goddammit. There's the other wheel. And then you connect and then you connect it. You don't even have to move this thing. So why why does it move? I don't get it. I don't understand. Whatever. It doesn't even slightly move during the transformation. That's the thing that just kind of boggles my mind. Anyways. Oops. It's not a deal breaker, it's just, well, it's kind of weird. And I still don't like how tight these shoulder joints are in the Shinobi room. I really, really don't like that. Because it makes it hard as hell to get the hands out of there and over the thing. I don't like that. I really don't. And the shoulders didn't need to be this tight. They don't need to be that tight. And they could... The shoulders on this ratchet are a hell of a lot easier than this do, and this is kind of the starring mecha. This is the one that you transform more often. This is the one that goes from here to here to here to wherever else. And yet these joints are crap, and these joints are fair. I don't get that. By the way, for Shurikinjin Drago, uh, Shinobi Maru is over here, and that's all well and good, whatever. But now you're putting it over here. So doesn't that mean that the thumb is now going to be on the wrong side? Well, funny thing is, now that I look at it, it actually doesn't have a thumb. So it's got four fingers, a bump in the middle that could be a left or a right thumb, and then it's got Wolverine claws on the end. Uh, I'm sorry, Gekitosha claws on the end here. Geki Toja had four claws, not three. So it's it's shittest Wolverine claws. Uh, and then this. 
I just want to know what happens to the one. Let's see. Remember that thing I was talking about earlier, responsibility with accessories? Well, here it is. I actually take care of this one. Don't grab it by the leg and don't shake it around. I don't have to read Japanese to know that's a really, really stupid warning. You think just like with the uh, American politics these days that Bandai is under the impression that Japanese kids are getting kind of stupid? Or maybe that the parents who are putting these together for their kids the first time are getting stupider? Oh. Alright. Question answered. You don't transform it at all. Which is kind of weird. I think I might flip this over so I can make this like a, it's like an extra rocket engine or something. That might help. And the head, that, that still bothers me that the head is on there like this. Yeah. So this goes on the back here. Okay, the rocket engine is a bad idea. I guess you could call this like a strum booster, like the Gerbera Tetra from uh, uh, Gundam 0078 uh, Stardust Memory. I suppose you could call it that. It's a strum booster. Whatever the hell strum means. I don't know. But uh, at least they're taking care of their accessories with this toy. Whatever. <coughs> The hips are molded as a single piece, and they ratchet. Well, that, that's okay. It doesn't matter if they ratchet or not. Oh, I forgot the, the feet do a weird thing here. Oh, God. Okay, so... This is almost as bad as the panel on the Go Kaio when you when you open up the chest and there's there's an accessory mecha sitting in there. You had that big old dick panel sticking out the front. This is almost as bad. I want to do this because like we he's sitting in the the big kid's chair, but officially the feet go down like that. Gross. I think I'll just, I'm just going to leave it like that. I wish this would transform a little bit, now that I think about it. Maybe fold out the handle, or maybe they have the handle come out for somewhere else, or... I can't really say this is the Crossbone Gundam Cross 1, uh, the, the Peacock Smasher. I can't say it's that, but I would like to have, like, have this open up, or maybe fold around in some fashion, or anything. As it is, it's kind of a slightly lame blaster. Although the fuel feed tube on the center one's kind of nice. Hmm. It's held in place with friction. The friction joint. That's interesting. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, I thought it was white plastic. It turns out the face is actually completely painted because the, uh, the opposite side is the plain gray. It's a nice texture on the back there. I like that. Moment of truth. Now that I like. That's better than uh, 
That's better than the one that you hear on here. Oh wait, that's right, you can't hear it because the battery drained. Seriously, what, what happened to the batteries on this? Honestly, I have no idea. Oh, by the way, uh, taking care of your accessories. I don't know, put it down here. There's a face on there. Or maybe stick it on his butt or... I don't know, like, if, if headers taught us anything, it's that you can stick them absolutely anywhere, so why can't this one do the same thing? Ugh. I just reminded myself of Ghost Sager. Ugh. Ghost Say Ultimate is tragic, because it's this close, but it's also this far from being good. Don't get me wrong, that sounds great when you attach it the first time. It sounds great. I'm not really liking it after it's attached. I kind of want to power up a sound of... I want something else in there. Well, it's not the prettiest. Uh, thing that could have come out. But I like it because it's kind of self-parody, but it also represents, I mean, as it's supposed to, it represents the science fiction side of Japanese culture, which, you know, I would not be here. You would not know my name. I would not know my own name. You know my name! I totally... If it wasn't for science fiction in, in Japan, like, we would not be having this conversation right now because I wouldn't have bought it. Accessories. 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 What am I supposed to do about that? Well... Whoa. I actually make a Casino Royale reference. It was a good movie, just leave it alone. Ava. That joke was bomb bad. All right, I said I was gonna get it, and uh, I got it. There it is. So this is Ava Unit 4A saying, "Wait, I'm not done yet." I got something else in the mail from Shuriken Sentai Ninja. I don't get roleplay toys very often. The last roleplay toy I got from Super Sentai was the Lifebird from uh, GoGo5, which is still awesome. But in terms of the most recent one, probably go Kaiser. It'd be, uh, why am I doing this to myself? This is probably the most recent roleplay I've got from Super Sentai in terms of the most recent one that was manufactured. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not big on the role play. For me, it's just kind of hit and miss, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's, that's just how that works. So, uh, oh, who am I kidding? I'm going to store these over here. So I can totally get in the way and fill up my shelves with useless crap even more. So the roleplay thing doesn't happen very often with me. It's not that I hate it, it's not that I love it. It's just, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, whatever. There's certainly more roleplay toys I would have got wanted to get over the years, but, mm, eh, what are you going to do? Here is again, um, bent, bent cardboard box. Part of the problem with Ninja that 
um, that Schinkinger, for example, avoided is their collectible gimmick was the heat end discs, which were just a single, sometimes two piece, it's just a flat disc. It's just a pancake with a hole in the middle. And then there was, now that I think about it, there was only one toy in the whole line, which was tragic in my opinion, that could actually read each disc individually and uniquely. Um, again, in my opinion, that was a travesty that they, they didn't, didn't carry through with that. The problem with Ninja's gimmick, they could have done the same thing where it was just a ring that attaches to whatever. But the problem with this particular gimmick is that you have to remake this a dozen times over. How, however many were there were. There had to have been at least 12. At least. And, excuse me, each one had a different mold on the face, you know, because the face is different on each, each of them. The colors on some of them are different because this is black, and the one for Ufomaru is marbled gray and there are probably some other colors in between as well and then you've got it's it's okay to have dozens of these but when you have to mass produce electronics and tiny electronics in different colors and different shades every single time that's where the expense goes so there should have been one of these or two or three or however many and then have like little teeth tooths, toofers, whatever, attached or molded into the sides. And then when you finally attach it, it will, even if there was just one sound effect, maybe two sound effects, de depending on how this was integrated into the toy line, then you wouldn't have to make as many of these and they wouldn't have been as expensive to manufacture either and it would have reduced the costs of each individual toy overall. So the sure Kinjin, you could have cut ten, fifteen dollars off of it if you only had just one of one of these electronic thingies. As opposed to the example that you're gonna see here, where it also comes with its own um oh wait, or does it? Yeah it does. I was about to freak out for a moment there. Ouch where it also comes with its own, wow that's really tiny where it also comes with its own uh, um, whatever this thing is called so I don't know how much money they were trying to save or how much money they were expecting us to spend on it and by the way for the record I got all these on discount so that's the only reason I've got them But yeah, that's, this is kind of the flaw of uh, Nin Ninja. Oh, this one has some extra buttons on it. Alright. <clears throat> What's it called? The Iron Maru? From uh, Shinkinger? Wasn't that what it was called? The Iron Maru? think. I mean, you could have... Oh, that's nice and solid. Wow. it's nice. Looks better, too. Sometimes I mention the tape. Okay. Wow, I totally forgot there were lights in this thing. You also have to make a version that has lights in it. You have to make a version that doesn't have lights in it. You see where I'm going here with this? This probably costs even more to manufacture than those do. Wait, how did it... How did it know? Oh! Wait, 
right, so does it? Now I'm curious. Oh, okay. So it's not as smart as I thought it was going to be. I was like, holy crap, it's reading these individually, and I just finished a five-minute rant about it. No, it turns out it, it, it only recognizes the yellow, yellow ninja. I didn't watch the series often enough to know the names, so shut up. I do like how it glows. I wonder if they're all... Never mind. I'll look it up afterwards. Huh. It's just that one. Now there's a button on the back here. Oh. A little... It's probably a trigger to let it know it's doing something different. So for argument's sake... There's a printout of the Yellow Ranger on the underside there of his helmet. Why would you do that? Whatever. Fail. <laughs> it's because they know it's not going to be attached. So it probably doesn't even have a... Oh yeah, there's no button. There's no interface on the bottom side. I'm probably going to end up liking that one most of them all. <laughs> of the three of the three I've got, I think I'm going to end up liking that one the most. Of the three that I will ever have, by the way. I don't imagine myself picking up any more from the Ninja, so this this will be it. I feel like I'm picking up a Happy Meal. That's how small this thing is. Good gravy. Oh, I just realized I don't have any batteries on this. turns those two directions. Alright. Oh, great. How do you get this out of here? Okay, I didn't even press the button. I'm going to pause the video and, uh, what size does this take? I don't know. I'm going to look for batteries, so I'll be right back. Juokin, the one and only, the almighty, we thank you for the sacrifice of your AAA batteries. Okay. I really want to know how to get this out of here. Eh. Let me get these out of here. I know the instructions are right here, but I kind of want... Like, there should be an obvious button somewhere. Do you push down and twist? No. Do you pull out and twist? No. Okay, seriously, where the hell's the button that makes this, uh... The 
Don't tell me it's like permanently attached. All right, all right. I'll look at the instructions. Oh, I see it. All right. The golden button on the back side here. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that begs the question, which, okay, which way officially do I orient this thing, this ninja shuriken? Which way does it go? Because there's always, like, an official direction it goes. Looks like fire is down. So, like that. So the fire is always on the bottom side, and then that orients it. So it's held like this. Kind of shield and kind of not, and it's kind of cool. Now, don't get me wrong; it's kind of kidified, but uh, it's a nice shade of red too. It's a fiery red. Well, actually, more of a kind of a magenta. Kind of well, no, not magenta, but kind of a. It's an off red. It's it's not solid red like uh, like on uh, Shuriken Jin. It's 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 slightly kind of, there's like an oh-so tiny bit of blue that they threw in there. Whatever. Decals are nice, too. I feel like I'm looking at um, transparent windows. Oh, God, wouldn't that have been cool if every time you opened up one of these things, this thing got colored? That would have been so awesome. Alright. Here we go. Where's the speaker? The speaker is up here. I assume that means it's on. Jesus Christ. That's not even funny. This this is fucking loud. You know Power Rangers and Super Sentai, the have for for about four years now they've been making these things really fucking loud. I mean, like really unnecessarily loud. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about the um, whatever these shurikens are called. They're something show. I don't know what it's called, but like these are quite just because of the like the size of the 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 speaker on the inside, whatever. But Jesus Christ. This is loud. This is really fucking loud. Oh my god. That's ri that's ridiculous. It really really is. Quit your bitching. I guess that mean I guess that means it wants me to do something with it. Oh, all right. Wait, what? Oh, I see. That's the sword, by the way. That's the sword. Why does it make a sound only go in one direction? And it doesn't do it when it reaches the other end. It's only when it's done this way. Anyways, yeah, that's a fucking terrible sword. Like, look at that. Fucking look at that. Wait, you know, this would have been perfect. You know, I think I'm just going to make that the official mode. That's, that's how it's going to be in my house now. Wait, this isn't my house. 
that's a better blade than that is by a long fucking shot. By a long shot. That's terrible. That's it. That's the mode. You know, the, wor the worst part about it is I can't even block this sound. I, I can't block the speaker. For a moment there, I thought I had a motion sensor in it, which would have been awesome, by the way. They've done that before. Oh. That's really loud. So is this... Which mode is this? How do you hold this? Oh, it's a left-handed weapon. So you hold this in the left hand. No, that can't be. Huh? What? That, that's so counterintuitive. You're supposed to hold it like this. By the way, my hand barely fits in there. You're supposed to hold it like this. I might have to put the battery back into this. Because I really want this blade to go forward. But it's so counterintuitive to hold it like this. To have it postured like this. It's so counterintuitive. This is supposed to be a sword, right? I mean... <laughs> There's triggers on both sides. So... Well, I, I still... Well, I guess beggars can't be choosers. It, it's always a left-handed weapon, I suppose. It doesn't make a ton of sense. But then... I look at the side of this box, and lo and behold, he's... He's holding it in the right hand. So the sword is held, sword mode, whatever this is called. So sword mode's held in the left hand, the long bow is held in the left hand, but the claw mode is held in the right hand. What? It's a nice idea. I mean, I, I still, I still, I freaking love the idea of this weapon. Just, it, it's bound to be kidified, but that being said, I don't have to like it. Oh, you can interrupt it by transforming it. Hmm. Okay. You can just leave it like this. And then... Supposed to fold all the way over like that? Wait, why does that ratchet and this doesn't? Oh, it does. Never mind. That's still really loud, but that's really fucking cool. And it's 
still really fucking loud. Just, uh. Why would they need two triggers on here and both triggers making the same sounds? The sword mode, I'm using this trigger. Why would this trigger down here make exactly the same sound? Why not have it disconnect? Right. Yeah. And then for the longbow, I may have underestimated this. I may have underestimated this. Oh, uh, where is it? Here it is. Oh! Is it possible it's actually that smart? There's no way. So does it matter which way this goes? camera's picking up on it, but the, there's five buttons, there's two, there's four, there's six, there's six buttons on the inside here. These two, on the top and bottom, control the shuriken coming out. And I'm actually grabbing it right here. This button in the middle, the button on this side, is the trigger for when you take this in and out. I can't do it. So then what are those? Okay, maybe it's not as smart as I thought it was. Because there's three additional tabs on the inside here that I don't recognize. They don't seem to trigger on anything, but they don't latch onto this, either. So does it really matter which direction this is facing? That's fucking loud. same sound as because then it goes like this for the claw. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. I just figured it out. That took, what, half an hour? Okay, I got it. I got it now. Okay. It's not as smart as I thought it was. It only knows when it's... It only knows when it shift oops when it shifts back and forth like this. That's the only time it knows. It's the only way that the toy is smart. It's only smart enough to know which way it's turned. If it's, you know, turned this way or if it's turned this way. It's only smart to know that. So the technology that's in here is identical to something I pulled out a few minutes ago. Oh shit, that I really need to clean my shelves. Okay. The Gokai Spear. One. Two. The Gokai Spear has two triggers on it. It's got a trigger on this side, which is only used for when you when you use the spear mode. Or the uh um whatever this one is called. And then, for the gun mode, you're using this trigger. Okay? But then, when you want to put it in, when it's in trident mode, like this, you're using the same button, but there's a trigger on the inside here that tells it, oh, change how this button responds. The same thing is more or less happening here. Almost happening here. Oops. It's going to take me a while to get oriented to this thing. Right. It's smart enough to know when this is happening. Because when I pull the trigger when I pull the trigger here, it's different from when I do it this way. Bandai, that's, that's really way too fucking high. It really is. And then, when you hold it this way, nope, no, where is it, when you hold it this way, you're still using the top and bottom button, but the difference is, so there's actually three different triggers on this thing. I'm trying to outshout it and failing miserably. So there are three triggers on here. It is smart enough to know when this thing turns. It's smart enough to know that, but here's your third trigger right here. Hmm. But if that's the case, why does this go in at different angles? No, it wouldn't. Okay. Hmm. It's a strange one, the way they arranged this. I, I, I think they could have done it slightly differently. Um. Gosh, it's really hard to... It's really hard to... It's going to take me a while to get oriented to, you know, which which way am I supposed to hold this thing. Huh. And then that goes that way, and it goes out like that. So, so why didn't they just block one of these triggers when it's in one mode, and then when you transform it, which way? You shut this button off and you activate this one. Or, you know, you shut this one off and you activate this one, depending on which way you're expected to hold it. So it looks like there's a little bit of redundancy in here, and 
there's some switching around that could have been done a little differently. I still love the concept of this thing, even though I can't remember what it's called. I still like the idea of a multi-purpose weapon, weapon that's all built in like that. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I don't think it matters which way the shuriken goes, but the, I mean, the, it indicates there's three different ways you're supposed to put it in. So, wait, there we go. Yeah, so I don't think you're required to put this in. A, I think it's just for the sake of the TV show, like which direction is the head facing based on which one of these symbols is, is used for what. So I, I don't think it really matters which direction this faces. Okay. Put that out of the way. Oh. So, uh, UFO, uh, Shurikenjin UFO. I keep wanting to say UFO, Maru. And Karakuri. What did they call this thing? Uh, it's Karakuri Hengen? Henge? Something like that? Whatever it is. Whatever it is, I don't know. Okay, it's not strong enough to hold it. Well, this is it for my uh, my Ninja purchases. I, I don't see myself getting anything else at this point. Dino Maru is basically a copy of the Paul Maru, and I wasn't happy with Paul and Maru. What was the other one? Surfer Maru. It's a submarine. But I wouldn't get it specifically because the surfboard thing just really pissed me off. I think Surfer Maru might be the only one that I would get. I'm going to get the sword, the, the main shuriken sword, whatever it is. Probably no, I won't. Um, yeah. This is cool. I like this. Ufo Maru, it hits the right notes. It hits the right notes. It's not perfect. Then again, nothing from this series was perfect. There was actually a lot that went wrong. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with what I've got so far. Am I going to regret later on that I didn't get such and such? Probably not. I, I, I don't think so at this point, because it's been a year. And uh, what's the one? Uh... Juoger, which is currently on the air, uh, has reached its halfway point, because, well, actually, today is August, yeah, it's still August 1st, today is still August 1st, um, so, uh, I mean, what we've seen out of, out of, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, Juoger, uh, is, is, I'm not happy with it. At this point, Juoger, the only stuff I'm going to get is... Well, I definitely want to get uh, Jewel Wild, which is the gorilla, white tiger, and green elephant. I still want to get that. But that's kind of it. Um, I like, uh, was it Wild Jewel King, which is a combination of Jewel Wild and Jewel King, which is uh, the eagle, the shark, and the lion, which really pissed me off. I do not like that. Um, and then just because it's continuity, I'd get the, the three critters that go with that combination. Will I get, uh, Tosai Juo? It's up for debate. I wouldn't get it for the, the ultimate combined form. It kind of pissed me off. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, that's it. I'm done. Done. All I need is an editing program. And a place to shoot. This is not good enough. And a new camera. And I really need to go to the bathroom. This is Ava Unit 4A saying thanks for tuning in. Oh, hold it, Ava. Hold it.